All right, everybody, welcome to Sense Lab's presentation. We're going to actually do a little fun session here character development and storyboards. And this is going to be with RC Aradio. Our RC has uh, been in this industry yes. for over 20 years. He is uh, an amazing guy. You could see, yeah, hang on one sec. There we go. You could see a lot of his artwork behind him on the wall. He'll talk a little bit about how he does some of this stuff, which is really kind of fun. And you'll see all this stuff go live as he does it. Just so you know, he's been an art director, creative director, illustrator, storyboard art artist. He has also been an attraction, a attraction designer. And matter of fact, right At now- he Amusement is, parks. <laughs> right. Yeah, attraction designer. Explain that one, Mercy. Um, he's so, also right now the uh, creative director, VP of creative, uh, VP creative, creative director of Blue Core Creative. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to RC. And I will just for my camera in case you guys are seeing that. But I think you guys are probably seeing RC, so we should be. All right. Ready. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Oh, uh, thanks for the intro, this. Bill. If you guys have questions? Put them in. Put them in the. Uh, the chat area. We'll go ahead and, and address. Yeah, you'll have to be my eyes, Bill, for the I chat. Will, I, will. I can't I see him. So um, to answer Bill's question, welcome. We're going to go covering some uh, character development and storyboards. This first session is going to be in black and white. And to answer Bill's question, I worked for Universal Studios. I freelanced for uh, Disney and Marvel on various projects. But the core of my work, no pun intended, um, is based in attraction design, which is amusement park. So for the last 15 years, I've designed roller coasters, the Rip Ride Rocket, Transformers, Harry Potter, Minions. My passion's always been, obviously, they all cross over uh, storyboards. I worked on the Dolphin Tail movie. Um, uh, I'm from Florida, so it was filmed right here in Florida. And um, got an experience here to work on a feature film. So kind of a chameleon. Uh, a Swiss Army knife. I have to do a lot of different um, commercial art. And then my passion has always been illustration, character development, and storytelling. So after my stint at Universal, uh, over 10 and a half years working there, I opened up my own company called Blue Core Creative. And I'm still facilitating the attraction design industry. I'm writing um, an illustrated novel. Uh, I was featured in Heavy Metal Magazine for comics. And my passion is now that I'm old and um, semi-experienced <laughs> of 20 years, I am sharing that with everyone through my, uh, my Patreon. Uh, you'll see it. And, and um, making lessons and tutorials for everyone. So there you have it, Bill. I'm ready to go when you are. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. I, I, I meant to mention some of that stuff you've been working on. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, so, RC, couple, one of the questions I know that I wanted to ask is how, and it kind of somewhat addressed that, but like you've got mm. a lot of people that are probably watching that um, don't really know a lot about education online. Where do they find it? I mean, how do they find your Patreon account? How do they find Blue Core Creative? Um, I, I know that those are two areas that you actually are doing stuff in. Um, I know the Patreon account you do, and and that's I mean that's these are all opportunities for people to sure. learn. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, these lessons that you're seeing right now are actually uh, this is a hybrid of some of the lessons that I do now. I'm a traditional and digital artist, so many times you can find it at uh, Patreon.com forward slash RC7. Real simple, RC7, and on there I upload my lesson plans and I'm sharing my knowledge not only in the illustration uh, community, uh, my, my passion is character design and storyboarding. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this session, but um, I'm also gonna have architectural and how to, how to do a little character development um, in regards to storytelling um, through visuals and through uh, different aspects. So yeah, you guys can check me out. I'm, I'm all over on the internet and whatnot, but I'm excited to share uh, my techniques and, and explain to you a little bit about how do you get there with the character development? Where do you go? How do you build it? And, you know, everyone does something differently. It's really, what's my process? I'm sharing my process with you. There's no wrong or right reason. I just want to give you guys with as much uh, knowledge and hopefully um, entertain you as much as I can, because that makes sense, right? Doesn't it? it makes sense. 
This is my um, Sense Labs notebook and sketchbook that uh, Bill and the team were kind enough to send to me. And this is chocked full of ideas and sketches and brainstorms, everything from character design to um, designing a desk. So there you go. What, what, when, when do you use that? <laughs> I use it every day, honestly. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'm ready to get started unless you've got any more questions. I wanna kind of dive into uh, the presentation here. Well, the questions are already starting to work. You tell me when you wanna hear one and I'll be glad to share it. Yeah, let me, uh, let me go full screen here. Let's see here. Okay, so let's get right into it. Character development. We're gonna work on, since it's Viking month for me, um, I'm gonna do a series of Viking illustrations and then I'll move on to something like dragons or fairies or automobiles or architecture. But for right now, for like the next 30 days, I'm, I'm diving into uh, Viking lore. So we're gonna cover um, the Viking hero and the leopard queen. And I'm gonna share my process with you. And what I wanted to say to you is, how, you know, how did we get here? For, for the new viewers looking at it, they say, well, how, how do you get to this illustration? What's the process? What do you do? Um, you can see there's stages of it. And even though this is the black and white sketching session, I wanted to show you this is, so we're, we're back engineering um, some of the character development. And I just wanted to share to you, how did we get here? Well, is it binge watching Vikings? <laughs> I love it. I, I've been watching the, the series. I'm on season six and um, it just happened to come in very good timing. But what I did want to say, and I'm, I'm using these images just for this demo only, but the fact of the matter is it's really finding great reference and getting into what story that you want to tell. What's the story? Is the character strong? Is the character feeble? Um, is the character pretty? Is the character aggressive? It really comes down to studying your good reference, you know, um, right down to the authentic Viking symbols. And what I do like about a lot of the shows that are on the History Channel and images on the internet, if you dig deep enough, um, you will find ruins and symbolic uh, images that you could put into your character and make, make it more authentic. But not only that, you could put your little twist on it. It's your twist on the artwork that you create. So it's really comes down to having good reference. Study the reference. We, we, you know, we have a few uh, images here and you can see everything from clothing, the belts, the armor, uh, you know, the simple, from the simple to the complex, you know, from the, the people in the town to the, the warriors, the shield maidens, the strong females, and the strong uh, Viking men. So it's not just the um, anatomy or the physical illustration of the character, it's everything that goes with it. It's the swords, the shields, the helmets, um, and deciding where you wanna take your style. And I'll, I'll get into that in just a little bit. Where do you wanna take it? Um, so I would say in, on the beginning of any project, whether it was, uh, you know, creating a new attraction for Universal or illustrating a children's book or a graphic novel, your first stage is obviously to create a mood board and get your reference right and keep it near you. Uh, so you can, you can study it and you can draw it and, and practice. So then when you're going, um, when you're going freestyle, you have all that knowledge, uh, tucked away. So Character development and sketching. Um, these are actually excerpts from uh, my Patreon class that's online. And I do a live uh, demo of the breakdowns. And I would have up a, a piece of reference and I would decide, you know, or maybe three, I'd put them together and I would start some live sketching. I um, wonder if you could see that. See the cursor there? No, okay. Yeah, yeah, we can see the cursor. 
Oh, you can see the cursor? Oh, great, thank you. Um, so basically over here, you have your, your, your red lines where I'm breaking it down. I got a, a little video to show you guys because uh, time-lapse, I, I want to show you uh, some of the time-lapse, but you got your second stage, which is your contour lines, and then you have your inking. Now, in tomorrow's session, I'm going to be covering the same characters, but I'm going to color them. I'm going to color them live so you can kind of see um, the process of that. So we start with a sketch over here, then we move over to uh, a loose pencil, something uh, that's uh, loose and, and chalky, and you can see the contour lines. Then you can decide if you want to keep the pencil and go right to paint or if you want to ink it. And last slide is how I got to this uh, Viking character that I'm going to share. All right, here's some, here's some images to share with you if you haven't seen them before on the development. So we went from the sketch uh, with the red lines or sometimes I use blue, uh, I usually use red or blue. Um, and then I came in here and I started really refining it. And as you can see the detail, I didn't make it 100% historical because I added these little, um, I'm kind of known for these swirls, uh, kind of the trademark in uh, some of my work that I do. And just remember, you're the artist, you're steering the ship, okay? Whatever direction you wanna take your work is where you should go with it, but it should be based from uh, some sense of historical or reality, um, or maybe not reality. <laughs> um, now we're gonna move into the female uh, piece. This is the snow leopard. Uh, you may have seen this on the ads for Lightbox and Sense Labs that they put out for me. Great. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Um, this started as, in, in the, it's the process. This started as a little simple sketch over here. I just, one day I was doodling and I started here and then I, I kept developing it. And I'm like, oh, I really like this character. Now her proportions are a little um, stretched, but I, my personal favorite is stylized uh, a little bit towards the cartoon side. Although sometimes I'm hired and I have to do very detailed or uh, portrait uh, illustrations that are very, very realistic. But um, let's see if I can uh, close up on this. I'd, I'd be curious to see if I can do this. Let's see if I, oh yeah, cool. Coming through nice and smooth, Bill? Yeah. Okay. So just, I wanna just take a little time to show you, this is a, an original uh, sketch. And so the proof is in the pudding. Um, can you guys all see that pretty good? All right, take a look at his camera, guys. His, his camera on the uh, the smaller side, you can see yeah. a little bit closer to the camera. Okay, so this is this is the original um, that I'm showing you digitally. I just I just scanned it in, and um, just to let you know that uh, on this one board, I, I had my music on. I was sitting in the studio, and I started to develop this sketch here. And I'm looking at the see there's some rune stones up in here and I knew I wanted her to have the shield I'm, I'm giving myself almost a diagrammatical roadmap for the illustration. Um, based so on you start actually in pencil. I do I nine times out of 10 I will start, <clears throat> I will start in pencil, and then I'll move into taking a photo of it on my iPhone or scanning it, which scanning is obsolete now but I'll bring it into the digital and then I'll, I'll start to manipulate and, and enhance. Um, so over here we have, um, snow covered rune stone. So I know I want it to be snow cause it's a snow leopard. Um, I'm starting to goof around with the name leopard queen. I, I decided to do a drawing of a, uh, a, a Viking sword. And you see inside of this drawing, I did a second drawing to practice. So I started with this, then I did her, I gave her some really long, long legs. Uh, she's a very powerful woman and I gave her a small head. I'm like, Oh, that's really cool. Um, so I'm sharing with you the process of what makes that character, you know, um, and this is part of my process was doing these sketches here and um, there you have it. So there's, there's that. Now I took that sketch and I brought it into Photoshop, which uh, during the course of this demo, um, I'm going to be, doing some live sketching for you to show you the breakdown process, not just a slideshow. But um, this is, the, I'm starting to develop the uh, snow leopard and the character. I, I, I made her legs a little shorter in this and um, I started digitally coloring it, which um, we're gonna work on that tomorrow in the coloring session. So 
wanted to see at this point if anyone had any questions before I move on to the next character. Oh, yeah, we got a couple in there. Okay, um, I'll field one. <laughs> all right, so um, one of the things that was asked was, what's your favorite part of your creative process? I'd have to say, uh, I think most artists would, would say this. There, there's two parts, but I'd have to say this, this part right here is my favorite part <clears throat> of the creative process. Once it, you scan it in? No, no, the, the, the conception of the sketch is keeping it loose. I'm not really worried. I'm kind of just throwing things together. To put together an illustration is, is quite a bit of work, um, although I do enjoy it, but, um, you know, laying it out. So I would say the first stage is the concept stage of even doing a concept piece uh, is that first drawing, just, just goofing around and doing some loose sketches and finding out what works and what doesn't. So I, I know you'll probably get to this, but one of the other questions we had was, how does character design help you with storyboarding? Oh, it's, it's great. And I'm going to get to that. That's a really good question. I by the way. You're going to get to that. <laughs> um, the more assets, like if you, you, if you take a look at her armbands, let's see if I can go here. Can you see the handbill? Uh, or no, let me get the cursor. Yeah, I mean, you can see it. You can probably zoom in and okay. see a little bit better, but yeah. So her armbands or her, um, her lapel, all, all of these are assets that become developed that you can use in the storyboard over and over again. So yes, um, the further you develop a character, now it depends how much time you have because uh, some of this, you have a lot of time. And as in my profession, um, you know, I could be working on uh, <laughs> the minions one day. And then the very next day I'm doing a Sumerian 3,800 BC um, <laughs> card game where I have to draw very realistic um, uh, Sumerians from 3,800 BC. So it's really doing your homework on the uh, assets or uh, the attributes to the character. Hmm. I'll take one more and then I'm going to move on to the, uh, the next slide. Um, well, one of the questions I was looking at right now, I just I'll read it off is, could you sure. share about any current projects? I know you're working on something. Um, I can. So personally, uh, with my company, Blue Core Creative, there's a lot of exciting things going on. I am producing a uh, seven part novel based on some of these characters you're seeing here. It's based on mythology. Um, that's one thing I'm really excited about. Um, I'm super excited and I'm, I'm super excited about my Patreon classes because I'm gonna be doing a very wide range uh, from pencil sketches all the way to full blown oil painting a la prima. And that's really my passion. The third thing is, as I mentioned, uh, Really, I just finished a card game. It's a board game called Ghost of Ur, and it takes place in 3800 BC. And um, I've done many illustrations for the playing cards, but also all the assets as in um, helmet, cloaks. Um, and that was, uh, I had to draw hieroglyphs and that was fun. So those are some projects I'm working on. All right, here, here, actually, I'm going to throw one more at you because this is actually a really okay. good one. Um, <laughs> I, I have a fear. This is this is for one, one of the people watching. I have a fear to create something unappealing or not good. How do I get over that as a beginner? Well, you know, I would say I do this with my, uh, since I've been doing this since I've been um, just a kid. I always knew that I wanted to be an artist. Um, I was really, I went to art school in Manhattan at the School of Visual Artists, a school of visual arts in Manhattan in the 90s. <laughs> it was frustrating because I was pretty much the last in my class and um, I had to work really hard. But to answer your question, practice makes perfect. Repetition is one of your greatest teachers. I'll go back to really studying great reference. Uh, art is math with style. And what I mean by that is you're constantly dividing in half and in half and in half for proportions, but everyone has their own unique style. You don't have to be an illustrator. Look at Picasso, look at um, some abstract, some beautiful abstract drawings, whatever you'll know when it resonates with you, but you have to put your feet in the water and test a bunch of different things you like. You may really love a certain style of art and then realize 
you know, that's not what you do. You may do something else like ruins or uh, uh, you may be really good at sculpting. But as far as drawing goes, I'm confident that anyone, just like, what was it, Gusteau, uh, anyone can cook. <laughs> uh, anyone can draw. <laughs> it's just a matter of practice and being patient and learning really the right repetitions to do. It's math, it's style. I was going to say, I think also just along those lines, I mean, mm -hmm. there, there's maybe you can't develop a character on your own without practice and, and style, yeah. but you can draw a background and there's background map painters, you know, that do backgrounds in videos and everything else that's going on. There's a lot of opportunity for artists to just, you've got to look, explore the different areas that are available. Exactly. That's part of the growth. That's part of the exploration. When I was working on the storyboards uh, for Dolphin Tale, I, um, I literally had to sleep on the floor to get the deadlines done for the next shoot. Um, it, was, it was intense, but I found out I was over-rendering. I was drawing too much detail. So it's all your skill set, and, and, and uh, sometimes less is more. Sometimes I just do a line drawing, and it's good enough for the client. And other times they want a full-blown rendering, which is called key art, which I do a lot of as well. So just keep at it. Keep at it. There you go. <laughs> all right. Thank you for that question. I'm going to move on to the next slide. Yep, yep. Um, this is really important. And this, this uh, is a perfect segue from the last question. And thank you for that. Choosing your character style. Wow. Doesn't this, doesn't this slide really say it all? Um, here are three Vikings. We have, we have one that's obviously the proportions would never even exist ever, <laughs> but it's cartoony. Oh, it's I think in, in, in the rock close to that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> No, um, <laughs> you can see that it's very well illustrated, but it's cartoony. And that's kind of the stuff that I really love to do. If we look at the one in the middle, he's wearing a, um, a raven skull with wings. And this is a Viking warlord. warlord lord. <laughs> it's stylized. OK, it, it's, it's, it's kind of in between both of them. The anatomy is still not... Um, exactly proportional to realism. However, it's close enough where it's like, wow, that's cool. The last one is <clears throat> more of a classical Renaissance realistic image. It's this uh, a dying Viking warrior with these sunken eyes. <clears throat> they all tell a story. So it's really important for you to choose the style that you feel comfortable with or explore. You may, you may be really good at realistic rendering and terrible at cartooning, you know? So um, that's really important. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Now, let's share this next slide. Um, these are some illustrations I did over the years and working, but you can see the, the shapes of the head here. Let's see my cursor. Um, I'm gonna zoom up a little bit because I, I wanted to share a little bit on that segue. So, um, you know, look at the simple shapes. Uh, and this is part of my courses. I've done a lot of advanced stuff, but I'm actually putting out a course for beginners to get started on too, on my Patreon. So here we have a very simple shape. Look, we did that shape. We have an elongated shape here. You see how I'm dividing it in half? This is basic stuff, but it's something that you do every, every day. I mean, walking's basic, but what is walking? It's one foot in front of the other, right? So you gotta learn how to walk before you can run. Um, uh, this, this is a three quarter and he's got a wedge head. <laughs> um, they're all shapes. I look at e even this guy sneaked in. Oh, look at, we have a Greek, a Greek gentleman in here. Um, so there you go. There's your cartooning. I'm giving you a second example. Let me bring this down a little bit. Stylized. Uh, here's another one of my faves. <coughs> Proportions are a little crazy. Eyes are small. You got his big Viking horns um, stylized and um, the female shield maiden. Um, very realistic. The proportions are right on and um, still just a little bit towards the cartoon because that's that's my heart. But um, there you go. Those, those are the uh, breakdowns. I'm going to let's see. I think it's almost time for live demo time. Let's see. Let's go to the next slide here. Oh, okay. I oh, know. See, I got my little cute. I got a, I got a little video for you guys that's going to show you some time lapse. Um, 
So let me let me pull that up, Bill. And you let me know how it runs, okay? Yeah, it should run fine. We tested it before. All right, here we go. I think I'm gonna mute. Here, let's see. So guys, this is this class is actually uploaded on my Patreon. I'm only gonna show you part of it, but I did want to show you some time lapse. sharing this with you because I love Viking mythology, the imagery, the strength, and the power. So welcome. Hope you enjoy this lesson. Let's begin. What I'm doing here is I'm doing a live sketch. It's basic shapes and forms. Massing in face of the Norse warrior, this Viking fellow. And what I'm doing is I'm showing you a live drawing, how my process works, and it's going fast. I'm going to go ahead and slow it down. Now these red lines, you see are the structure. I've broken the structure into thirds, I've divided it. And the red lines are the contour lines. They also establish the hairline, mustache, beard, shadow, the planes of light. Besides so that, it's kind of dark, strong, right sided light. So I'm going to go in again. I showed you the breakdown. I know it went pretty quick, but there's a lot to cover. Here's the breakdown of some of the penciling techniques that I do. And on this first stage, I will use a soft brush, a um, airbrush of some sort, or a soft charcoal pencil. On this particular one, I am using Sketchbook Pro, and I'm using the airbrush number six brush. <clears throat> and then I have it adjusted, so it gives me a nice soft line um, that adjusts with pressure. Now. The contours. Right now, I'm roughing in the hair. I'm, making, I'm still making adjustments. I've established the light source in my, my sketch. You can see the contour lines that I'm adding here, uh, breaking it down, making sure the eyes are even. Vikings didn't live very long, so this would be considered a very old Viking. Um, the lifespan was short due to their battle, so I wanted to make him in my illustration, somewhere in his late 30s to um, maybe mid 40s. Uh, <clears throat> so, as you can see, as the strokes get more confident, I'm, I'm still um, tweaking the shape. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and clean it in. Um, the lines actually get darker, and then I start to establish what I like, what I don't like, I continue to refine. Um, you can see how loose and soft these lines are. Uh, I like working that way until I decide whether I'm going to go hard ink, uh, soft pencils, what type of color I'm going to put on it. Is it going to be um, realistic? Yeah, see, I adjusted the uh, forehead. I, I wanted to make the forehead a little bigger. Um, he's a very large man, so I wanted to give him some strong features. Finishing up here with the white outline for the sketch. I hope you learned something. Now let's move on to the inks. Okay. All right, I'm going to pause that so I could jump, jump back in. Um, so that was a sample of one of the classes um, that I'm producing. And I just wanted to let you know that those pencils, that uh, was, um, I'm going to be doing a live demo um, that was uh, pre-recorded, but I just, it was sped up because I want to cover storyboards too. Um, 
I'm going to share, I'm going to scrub through that. I'm going to show you a little bit of inking because I think it would interest you to show you how you go from pencil to ink. And I'm going to save the color for tomorrow. So let me, let me pull that back up and then I, I'll answer a few questions. And then I'm actually going to do some live, live drawing for you. So let me just um, play this again. And I, you can see some of the, the lines that I'm putting down thick to thin and um, there's already commentary on it. So um, let's begin the inks talk a little bit about the process. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a strong ink brush. You can see the strokes that I'm laying down there. Using a thick and thin technique and really following the contours of the pencil. So the strong pencil, strong ink. The thick and thin and the line techniques is something that should be studied see the example over to the right. So the dark lines are where the shadow fall. The light cross hatching or sketching is a value or shade put down by ink. The ink is meant to enhance the pencils and to bring clarity to that area. So I'm just roughing in some shadow, some massing, and I am using a chisel ink brush. Um, it's pressure sensitive from thick to thin. You can see I'm laying in the shadows on the opposing <coughs> side of the beer. And some very thin, what I call ghost lines for the fine work, such as the wrinkles, the eyes, stage, which will be the colors. So there you go, there's the ink. Okay, that's three of the colors. There you go. <laughs> so on this piece, I'm going to show you, this is the finished. I'm just going to pause it here and, and speak a moment. Um, this is what I'll be covering tomorrow, how I got to this point. And if you see the left-hand side of his face, very realistic, painterly, and the right side is very comic book. So that's for tomorrow but I just wanted to share that with you. I'm gonna field a few questions and then I'm gonna go into a live uh, drawing demo for uh, character design. I'm looking here, hold on. Yep, if we have any, if not, we're good. I'll keep There's praying. a lot of chatter going on, but let me see, find a question. Here. <laughs> <clears throat> sure. Chelsea makes some good comments here to people. Hmm. Each, piece, each art piece is learning process, a stepping stone. Um, I think referring to Christian because he had that great question earlier. Sure. Like it was like she said, you yourself be your worst critic. Are you your worst critic? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I am. You know, I think every artist uh, has that uh, has that uh, critic critical. You know, it's never good enough. It's never finished. But in the industry, you just you got to do the best you can and get it in your deadline. And um, each to the point of the last question is, yes, you get better with each each stepping stone and you build an arsenal of tools to help you faster, whether it's traditional or digital. And you, uh, you keep learning every day. You learn from other artists. That's why conventions and uh, uh, light box is great like this. And, you know, I'm just grateful that Sense Labs has uh, brought me into the fold here. And um, yeah, it's it's all good. How do you know when to cut it off? I mean, you could refine an image forever, right? Pretty and, much. And, and how do you know when to cut it off? I mean, a lot of times you will have a, a time deadline, right? Yeah. You got to meet that deadline. You got to get the artwork in. But what if you are, I mean, is it just something you just come back to? Three reasons. I, I could give you three three okay. answers to that. Um, the first one is um, you, you, could, you have to cut it off when uh, you're hungry. <laughs> the second is when you're tired uh, and is when the pieces do <laughs> um all joking aside you know i think artists have a tendency to overwork but as you start to mature then you realize that nine times out of ten less is more um and some of your early sketches are probably some of your best when you start to self-doubt or 
noodle too much, then it, I, I mean, honestly, I really don't do it that much with pencil drawings anymore. I used to in the beginning um, and not even with inking, but when it comes to painting, uh, especially oil paints, you can make mud very quick. So um, you'll learn when to stop. And I, I got to go back to your skill, your traditional skill, knowledge that you build up almost like uh, exercising and um, really paying attention to your reference, your environments and the assets. Because if you're, if you're paying attention to that, you'll know um, and do a lot of squinting. It's something I mentioned, but when you're looking at your reference, you had, <clears throat> excuse me, your reference pieces, squint. And what squinting does is it, it really brings out the contrast and what's really important. When you squint, that's what's really, really important in the illustration or the drawing or the piece of reference. You squint, it'll show you everything, the darks, the lights, the light source, and whatever's dropping away is really not that important. So that's a good uh, tip for you guys. Hmm. All right. Well, I think, um, I think I'm gonna jump into a, uh, a live sketch. Now I've got a couple different characters. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys how to do some warm ups. Uh, we're good to go, Bill. Unless there's any other questions. Yeah, yeah, go go for it. I I, I got okay. one, but I'll wait. Yeah. So I'm here in Photoshop. I'm using my uh, using my tablet. This beautiful pen. I want to show you guys something on the screen. So I'm using the the Sense Labs tablet. And look at this cool. I don't know if you guys could see this, but look at look at how beautiful this set is. And I'm very grateful to have this. It comes with the USB. It comes with uh, two different pens. A really, uh, really, really great product. So if you're more comfortable with the thin pen, you can use that. I like the chunky one because I'm usually gripping it all day. So um, there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. <laughs> hey, it makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so I got a couple things set up here. Maybe, um, I don't know how much time we have. I'm just gonna do some sketching, but I have the uh, male character, um, the, that one. And then I also have the, the female character, which is the snow leopard queen. So uh, where, maybe- where did, those, where did those start, RC? Where, where did you, where are you giving the, are these your scans, your pencil sketches that you scanned in or what is this part yeah, of the so already? I'm gonna use this as reference. They're my own drawings that I've done from my head. Um, but I'm going to use them just to, I'm going to overline them and show you guys a live demo. How I'd, I'm going to redraw it basically and show you guys how I use, um, whether it's a photographic piece of reference or the shield or sort and how I break it down in the drawing. But um, I'm, what I'd like to share with you guys right now are some, some warm ups. Um, this is how I like to start. And when I was teaching back in the day, I would do this exercise with people like, okay, 30 seconds, just draw what's in front of you, what's your favorite piece of reference. And um, then I would make them stop and throw it away. Um, this was back when pencil and paper was king. <laughs> but um, I started some warmups. I, I think it's important to, to just um, example. There was a couple different, um, on one of the last slides, I had um, some different shapes. So I'm, I'm just gonna go in here I'm actually going to erase these. Uh, these are the warm ups. I'm going to show you guys. I'm using the, the tablet right now. I like to use a blue. Um, I, I'm in Photoshop. Uh, I guess one thing's that uh, I just collapsed that. You know, I want my swatches up. Yeah, I got uh, kind of like a pencil setup. Looks like. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking up there. 28 pixel wide. Yep. 20. Is it 20, 28? But this so is. You just got a current pencil blue. Yep. Yeah. So i like to, I like to just kind of squiggle around at first. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with um, just letting you guys know that it's, it's thick to thin. This is pressure sensitive. So I'm drawing a very, a, what I call ghost lines. That's how I like to start it. So let's just, let's just do a, a cartoony face right now. I'm going to just start with a circle. Let me, let me zoom up for you. You guys can kind of, so everything's not so small. Um, that's at hundred percent. I should have did that 300 DPI. I did it 200. Anyway, no big deal. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and put a, a little, a little chin on her here. There's going to be a girl just going to sketch this out. A lot of lines, a lot of, I just want to, I want to share with you how, how I work sometimes. Um, going to give her a neck, 
I'm going to use L for the lasso tool. Those are the hot keys. I'm going to use V for the vector. I'm going to move that up. Command D um, for deselect. I'm going to go, what I love doing is once I get the structure, I go to my eraser tool and I do it at about 50% opacity and I just push it back real soft. Just push it back. Same with these over here. I'll push these back. I got a little sketch going on. I work messy. I definitely work messy. So now I'm going to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make an ear. I'm going to use that. Uh, let's, let's erase this a little more. I'm going to go and define the shape of the head. Nice and easy. I got a sketch pencil that I'm using. I'm going to make her neck right here. I'm going to give her, a, since we're doing Vikings, this is a cartoon asterisk or whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to give her some shape here for a shoulder pad, shape here for a shoulder pad. I'll cut it. Um, this line's kind of bothering me, but I'll ignore it. So if I want to draw the rib cage, so here's really important. You want to find your center line and you want to find this line is going to control where the face is, where are the eyes looking? Are they looking here? Are they looking up? I'm just going to back those up. So you kind of make your cross line here. Real simple, real light. Now we know where she's facing. So what I like to do, I'm going to just do this really quick. I like to just put a shadow under the nose. I like to put a, just a shadow for the eye socket. Uh, eyebrows, since this is cartoony, I'm going to have a little fun with it. I like to define the cheekbone in here and establish your light source, guys. Really, really, really important, even in the sketch mode, to decide where the light's coming from. The light's coming here. I'm gonna, so that's making the chin pop out. That's the shadow. So if the light's coming here, then this side of the face would be in shadow. I really love this brush. I'm gonna drop it down to like 40% opacity and show you guys just putting in some very basic um, shading just to help understand the piece. There you go. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna go back to my eraser. I'm gonna get rid of this thing. All right, whoa, come back. Skip those, hold on, hold on. There we go, we're back. Um, all right, so we have the basics right now. Now you could do one or two things. You could go in with the eraser. I use an airbrush eraser that I have <coughs> preset. You can do this and knock it, knock it back again. I'm going to draw over it. And I like to do this, or you can make a separate layer and just lower the opacity. I'm just going to, for time's sake, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go with a harder brush. Now, let's see. The first brush was a, just a standard sketch brush, real soft. You see it's got a nice charcoal -y feel. Now I'm going to go with a harder brush um, that is still pencil-y. It's still got, uh, let me zoom up on it. It's going to pixelate a little bit. But let me, I want to show you the, uh, you see how it's still, it's still, uh, still has, it's weird. Pressure control? Yeah, it's, it still has the, um, somehow I switched over to the screen there. Okay, so Let's lower this. I have to actually go into the preferences. It, it's, it switched to my tablet to the other. Um, let me see here. I gotta go into the preferences. This here. So I'm gonna go into the um, preferences. It switched me over to the other screen. This is how cool this is, the software here. Even get a software demo today. I'm gonna go back to the screen. Somehow I, I switched, I, I toggled something on accident, but I'm gonna go to display too. I'm like, something's going on. All right, there you go, guys. That's how quick it was. <clears throat> I'm going to use this detail brush, and now I'm going to start cleaning it up. So this is phase two. Um, since we're doing the Viking girl, I'm going to give her some crazy hair here. Here's the hairline. You want to follow the hair, but for this part, she's got a cut here, and then the hair comes over, and that's at 100%. And I'm going to give her a look there and a look there. Those are her eyebrows, kind of cartoony. <clears throat> one there, bridge of the nose, shadow, 
Just having fun with it. She's like, all right, who's over there? You see, I got the eyes looking over there. Um, typically, <clears throat> Viking women would wear heavy, dark um, mascara. So I'm cleaning it up. <clears throat> this movement's really important. For example, let me just, let me do this, do redo the nose, okay? So when you're drawing the nose, let's erase this, it's a little distracting. Let's put that down a little bit, okay, brush. Um, if I'm doing the nose over here, I usually like to start just with a circle and then a triangle, just a shape. <clears throat> Underneath is a shadow, then there's a nostril, a nostril, like that. So wherever the light's coming, so actually this shadow would, would cast over a little bit, and then there'd be a shadow here. Um, so it's all in the light source, right? So we have this nostril here, this nostril here, like that, and then this little part of the lip, the top lip. So this, this work that I'm doing here, let's, let's just make a lip real quick. Real loose, I'm, I'm, I'm just bottom of the lip, shadow there, shadow there. Um, and then I'm gonna move on because I wanna show you some storyboard stuff too, but definitely wanted to give you some live uh, illustration. So there's a light there right in here. This movement, learning this, look at that, no lag, it's just awesome. Um, that's huge. Doing the sketching like this, I'm just, I'm simply doing this live for you guys. So you can see I'm sketching in light source, okay? Um, I'm back to the sketch brush. I'm gonna go and scale this up a little bit. There you go. So I'm still in blue zone, which is my, my test area. Let's give her a really cool necklace, a Viking. Let's give her a wolf. So this wolf shape, I, like if I was doing this, I would go wolf. I would say, um, let's give her a scar on her eye. Let's go to E, the E for erase. Um, come up here, E for erase. I'm gonna erase that, scroll to 100%. <clears throat> All right, I go back to B for brush. I love the hotkeys in Photoshop, it's, I live by them. So she's got, a, she's got a nice little scar there on her, uh, from a battle wound of some sort. And there you go, here's a, here's a, so the wolf, ready? So we could do a, uh, just a simple shape. Let's do some math, guys. What do you say? All right, we're gonna we're gonna do a triangle. All right, there's a triangle. And break that down. I'm just dividing half, half, right? And then I'm gonna divide it in half. I'm gonna make the ear, and then the jaw, ear, and then the jaw, and then another triangle for the wolf's nose, the eye, eye. And then we're gonna put uh, Thor's hammer right here. We're gonna put some cool spirals and some, some Celtic. So if you wanted to do a detail, if I had to show an art director, I'd have to actually develop this. And this, this is a, a live drawing. This is some black jade of some sort and, you know, Viking ruins. And um, now there's a pendant back here and that becomes the necklace. There you go. Love it. I love it. Love drawing. <laughs> yeah, you guys... A lot of, lot of uh, comments about they, they're loving to see how messy you really are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really now. Hey, here we go. I love that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop instead of erasing, I'm going to drop the opacity here. onto two or three. So I just got that layer. I used the vector tool and then the number three on the keyboard. Now I'm going to do a little bit of clean inking. So I have a, I have a really nice ink brush in here that I use. I only use about three or four brushes over and over and over again. Let's see, this is it's down here. There it is. Boom. All right. So now I'm going to go hit D on the keyboard. D gives me black, default color in Photoshop. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go one up on it, even though this is at 200 percent It's still it's not breaking up. So I'm gonna create a new layer. And I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do some fine inking here. Z, zero for full opacity. And here we go, let's see. I'm gonna 
give her blue eyes. Just a, just a touch. These strokes are very confident. Now, it's all the, all the structure was a mistake. All the structure has been done. So I'm really connecting dots. So in my mind, there's a dot here. I know it sounds silly, but in my mind, there's points that I want that to be one line. Uh, in architecture class or architecture school, you were always taught, always taught to draw over, to draw over. That's important when you're doing this because you can always come back and clean it up. You want to go past it in a very confident stroke. Confident, not, no, not that. <clears throat> Unless you're going for that. <laughs> um, these are quick, confident strokes that are going to help you. Um, this is where her hair is parted. She's got a little action going on there. Eyebrow. Boom. Um, now you can make the eyes bigger and make it way, way more cartoony. You could, I kind of, I kind of like where this is going. Um, can't wait for tomorrow also to show you guys because I'm going to save these files. And I'm going to color everything. It's, if you're interested in coloring, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you my secrets. The only reason I learned Photoshop was so I could color my comic book pages back in the day on Photoshop 3, Photoshop 2. That's how many versions I've gone through on this program. It was back when you were making Colt? Yes, it was actually Colt and um, another uh, episode of what I was doing. But I, I didn't even, I was hand painting the pages. But I knew that, I, that this digital coloring was coming out. Now I'm going to lay down some gray uh, tone for you guys. I love keeping the slider open, guys. If you want to go ahead and take a screen capture or whatever, this interface is really dialed in. I, that means coloring. I got all my colors here, got my layers down here, and then I got my brushes. It just seems so seamless. So I'm staying in the grayscale. I'm going to go to 100% opacity, so it fills it. I'm going to drop this layer beneath it. So very quickly, um, I'm filling this area. And this layer is underneath the stroke. Yep. Just did, correct? Yeah. Yep. It's a separate layer. I'm, I'm for speed time. I'm, I'm just going fast. But now watch my slider over here. I'm going to go pick it. And I'm, remember the light source, guys. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to add that light source. It's got a little red in there. I want to keep it grayscale. There's light source here. The nose. If you hold down the option key, it brings up the picker. You go here. A little too dark. This is what I do for storyboards. I use this technique all the time because it's fast. Um, just her hair's light. I don't want to. I don't want to go too dark. So I don't want to overwork it, like we talked about, right? <clears throat> um, her eyes. I'll go in with a, a bright white. If I hit B on the keyboard, it'll bring me back to a default color, and I just add that there. I'm gonna go with a slightly different brush to give her just a really sweet highlight here. <clears throat> and I'm thinking overall her skin tone is a little too dark in value. So watch this. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get that uh, eraser, the airbrush eraser, B for brush. E. Um, where are you? It's my second set. Okay. And I'm just gonna knock it back 50%. So I hit five on the keyboard. You see the opacity? When you're, when you're in your brushes, if you hit one, it's 10. I don't know if you guys can see this. And if you hit uh, zero, it's 100%. So I'm going to knock this back 50%. Look how nice that is. This pushes it back, even her hair. because She's got white hair, right? Nice and clean. So who said I am messy? Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> and I love it. So I got the blue lines underneath. I'm going to do a little bit more. Um because time's just flying by. I'm, I'm not even keeping track. So you're going to have to keep an eye on me, Bill. We're, we're, we're good. But there's no, you okay. know what? There's not a session after us. So if we go a little over, oh. it's okay. Yeah. All right. I know, but no. Oh, damn. You started I'm going to share this real quick. A little paint creative. Yeah. You're going to have to come back tomorrow to hear how uh, RC does. Uh, if you're not, he uses, if he, she says this, she says, do you still only use Photoshop for coloring or have what other, what other? <coughs> 
years have you tried? Again, tomorrow you'll find yeah. that out. I use pretty much every program that's available to me, uh, just like a Viking, uh, a warrior. I knew he'd answer that. I knew he'd use, that. use all resources available to you. Uh, I use Procreate. I use uh, Sketchbook Pro is one of my go-tos when I'm, I'm, I'm mobile. When I'm in Photoshop, I love using the tablet because um, it, it makes me very disciplined with the strokes. So uh, let's not forget the wolf. Let's finish this up because I see it's almost 11. Holy cow. I didn't even get the storyboard. So let me just wrap this up. I only got time for... You got, you got a little time, RC. We're, we can go over just a little bit. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't wanna, like I said, we've got nobody behind us. I don't want to bore anyone. <laughs> That's where you're supposed to step in, Bill. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's hit the course storyboards real quick. How would you do this? Yeah. Okay. Bam. There you go. Just real quick. Hold down the Alt key. I'm going to put into some really quick grayscales. I hope that um, you guys are enjoying this. I'm going to go hit the Alt key and grab some white. I'm going to grab some dark from there. And I'm just going to just dust in. I love this. this is my chalk brush. Just dust in some some value and I'm going to, I'm going to do the, uh, ready guys. Here you go. Oh, escape. Did some weird thing there. There's the lips. I'd like to pencil those and the wolf button. We don't have time. So brush to zero. I do want to get to the storyboards cause I promoted it and I got some exciting stuff to share with you guys. Bam. All right, there we go. <clears throat> I'm going to save that. Let's go uh, back to the presentation. All right, here we go. Is everyone cool? Uh, storyboards, Viking Hero Saga. Um, placing your characters in storyboards. Well, I chose um, in this particular story, I want to talk a little bit about story development, um, what's involved. Once you have developed your characters, the physicality itself will give your character its own story for sure. Um, in this particular story that I'm working on, there's a set of twins, um, brothers, as you can see over here. And then there's the, uh, the mighty epic uh, Viking father. And um, in this story, they're searching for their long lost mother. And um, she was lost to the sea. And it's a classic uh, Viking story. Uh, they were close to the sea <clears throat> and this is part of when you guys actually get a sneak, sneak, sneak peek on the novel series that I'm producing uh, this fall. Um, and I just wanted to share it with you. This are some of the characters. Uh, so now I'm placing these Viking characters into a story. It's really important to develop your environments. Okay. So I did some sketching, um, had so much cool reference out there. Um, and I chose to go cartoony. You could see um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pan around to the set. I call it a set. Um, you can see the scale. I put a person in there. This dude's this guy's like six foot. So you can see the scale of the house. We got a, a Viking banner. There's some uh, 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 mountains, very mountainous area for, uh, in the background. There's shields, little Celtic symbols. There's a dock, and of course the classic Viking vessel. Um, so there you go. I, I wanted to zoom up on it and share with you, um, <clears throat> some of the thought process of, of, of what goes into a board. It's you're building a set, you're building a war a world, you're responsible for it. <clears throat> so let me dive right in here. Um, to the left are the storyboards. I'm going to walk you through it. And then I'm going to draw live a few storyboards. Um, to the right are, uh, images for demo use only. And, you know, you have to have your inspiration. These are part of the mood boards or reference boards, as I call them. <clears throat> they uh, provide, if I were to turn this into a director, they would immediately see a movie director or um, a fellow uh, set designer or a colleague. You immediately see, <clears throat> it, it's much like uh, Norway um, with the, uh, the massive mountains 
and um, the, the sea. And they didn't really have a lot of land because it's so mountainous over there. So you immediately get the color palette, you get the feel, and you get the structure. Now it's your job to take your reference and turn it into a story. So hopefully this, this holds up resolution-wise. And I'm using a, a, a brush anyways here. So let's see if I can go one more, kind of walk you through the pacing here, which will be cool. Um, so these little arrows, you good, Bill? Everyone good? Yeah, 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 yeah we're good. Cool. Um, <clears throat> these arrows here, so we have a mountainside, okay? Look at uh, mountainside, night, full moon, Viking village. These arrows that you see here, as loose as it is, mean that the camera's pushing in. When you see these arrows, that means the camera's going to push in. Camera's pushing in. We move to the next frame. <clears throat> yeah, that'll be a little easier for you guys. Um, push into mountainside, cabin, moon in the background. I'm giving myself little notes. So we, we started from here. The camera pushes in. I wonder if I could... Uh, no. Nah. Uh, camera pushes in, and we're zooming into this cabin, right? We push in even more. We look into the window, uh, seeing the, the silhouette <coughs> of the Viking father and son. I've been talking so much today. Got a little dry throat. All right. Excuse me. Now, let's go to the next frame. These are um, purposely drawn very loose. You're inside of the cabin, there's things hanging down. When you see, for me, when I'm doing storyboards, as I mentioned, I, I've done them professionally for major motion picture movies and also at Universal Studios on all the rides. I did uh, storyboards for pretty much every single attraction from the guest experience, from Harry Potter to Minions and so on and so forth. So when I see, when I see this, this is my shorthand for add two frames, almost like in between, like they do an animation. <clears throat> Boys, I have a surprise for you. Now that you're little men, that's my Scottish accent. You know, when you're storyboarding, you gotta, you gotta pitch it. <laughs> Father and son wind down the mountain to the docks below. So we know it's at night. We know they're at a mountain. This here, I'm gonna clean these up for you guys, but this here is their Viking ship and this is their dock. You see how simple that is? It's a bunch of scribbles, but it's composed. And we're using various shots. Uh, X, E, X, T means um, exterior. I, N, T means interior. I don't know if you guys caught that or not. Let's see if I labeled it. See interior, they're inside, exterior, wide angle. <clears throat> um, after this, I'm gonna stop and move to the next board to see if you guys got any questions. This is really cool because I know he's wearing a cape and really simply, I, I got the two sons. You can see the scale, this massive uh, father over here walking down to the dock. Exterior, the moon is full. Father tells of a great sea story. Boom, there's your boards. So six boards, it's an opening scene to one small part of the story. So I took the Viking characters and now I've put them into a story with context. Um, I've got two more boards to share with you, but I'm gonna pause for a moment and see if anyone has any questions. <clears throat> We're good right now. They're, they're right. making comments about Norway. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the fjords of Norway. <clears throat> Let's move on to the next page. Okay, so this is a hybrid. And um, once again, I'm going to share with you. Um, I have a, I didn't want it to be a massive vessel. I didn't want it to be this incredibly large Viking ship. I wanted it to be more like a three-person vessel that they're going out in. And they did have those. They had smaller um, vessels. So um, here's some reference, some beautiful reference of these amazing ships that navigated the sea. And uh, let me begin. They worked. So now this is a reverse camo shot. Um, it's a shot from the character, which is... <clears throat> the front of the Viking ship, which either, either was a dragon or a horse or um, some sort of beautiful sculpture on the front bow of the ship. Um, so the camera is behind, this is in silhouette and you're looking down the dock and behind the dock is their path that they traveled from the smoking um, cabin. So they move down 
They're getting prepped to go on to the ship. It's now it's a reverse shot. So you see it went reverse. The shot reversed again. Cameras behind them showing their journey. Um, now it's a bird's eye view looking down on the Viking vessel. Here's some images I, I loved um, when it comes time to color and atmosphere. This was the image that I wanted. So I put that in there. Um, I wanted to show the scale of where they're going to be. This is a really cool shot. Very simple, but very effective. This is a downward view, bird's eye view, looking straight down, almost a plan view of their journey. See these simple lines? It shows the uh, concentric uh, waterway that they're pushing through the water, and you're looking straight down on an open sea. <clears throat> Close up, side view. You see the father and the twin boys are sitting there in their vessel, and um, he's telling them this, the great story of the sea serpent. <sighs> Wide angle shot. Now, I'm going to zoom up on this, and it might break up a little bit, but just look at the feeling of desolation. That's them. I don't know if you guys can see the cursor. There's here is their ship. Here's the waves, and it's a full moon on the open sea. Yeah, we see all that. All right, great. Oops, I made it blue. Why is it blue? Okay, so let's go to the next. <clears throat> so the camera is cutting to a new scene. It's introducing a new character. We're we le left that scene, and now we're going somewhere else in the story. Down, down, down to the depths of the sea. Deep phantoms below the surface. A horn blows. Long vertical pan down. So this means that the camera is moving down to the depths of the ocean and leaving where they were to another location. Their location, the deep ocean floor, the Sea King underwater city. There's a beautiful city of Atlantis. And upon it is a throne. And on that throne is a mysterious character that's in silhouette. Let's see what else I got. Ooh, to be continued. Okay, so it was really important to me. I'll just share this with you guys. This is kind of a, it's really important to me that I had this reverse angle of something below looking up at the at the uh, the bottom of the ship with air bubbles. So I love that shot. Um, here's a, a reference for a beautiful Atlantean city. And then here is a shot of um, the fate of potential um, characters. So there you go. Let's see what I got in store for you next. Is there one more page? Okay, <laughs> so those are my cues. Um, we're gonna go, if anyone has any questions before I start actually uh, going in Photoshop and drawing, I know it's, uh, we're doing pretty good for time. And um, I'm open to a few questions. Uh, now, go for it, go for it. I'm gonna jump right into Photoshop and show you. Um, let's continue the story, let's do it live. Okay, so where did we leave off? Let's look, let's continue the story. Um, so there's, we leave the, at the throne. So there's two scenes. So let's continue and, and make some new, new boards. I'm gonna jump back into Photoshop. <coughs> Hello, Viking girl. I think she needs, um, she needs some tattoos before we leave real quick. So I'm gonna give her a little, I'm following the contour here. I'm gonna give her a tattoo there and a cool little circle one there and one here. She's got some, she's got some attitude. And I'm gonna to go to this brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. Just can't leave her alone, can you? <laughs> no, I actually wanna render it. This is gonna look cool. All right, <clears throat> see ya. Question was, came up, where do you find your references? Like you just showed us the three different shots from down underneath the boat. And where do you find this stuff? Um. We already know where you got the Viking images. Oh yeah, <clears throat> really? It's the um, it's a, it's collecting over the years and and really paying attention. I got to tell you, you know, for anyone that's getting started, when I wanted to do storyboards, for example, I watched Big Hero Six, and this drives my family crazy. I'm like, oh, that's a pan, that's a cut to frame, um, uh, that's a fade. <laughs> 
<laughs> what I would do is I would millions and millions of dollars are spent on a DVD or a movie. If you just pay attention and slow down, you can find out and look at the frames and start to learn the composition of a person here, cameras here, and then a person here, right? I'm just drawing some really simple shapes. Um, the next frame, to answer your question, I use a lot of um, TV, uh, DVDs, and I, I, I freeze frame the images because all the hard work's been done. The sets are already made and it just teaches you. Uh, whether it's uh, Star Wars, I worked on some Star Wars uh, properties for um, uh, a contest and a few different uh, things for Disney. But <clears throat> you it, you could free <clears throat> like let me go back to Big Hero Six. I'm jumping around. I would I freeze frame the intro and I said just to, just to give myself a test. I broke it down, I think 20 frames, and I just I I quickly did them like this. Like I, this is live. I just I just make a box. I don't want to draw over there because I like the nose. I just draw a box. Uh, if I'm in Photoshop, I'll duplicate it. And you'll see on the next frame. And I'll be like, okay, let's put her into a frame. Ready? Let's start with a close-up or a medium shot. <clears throat> Don't need much. And let's see the swords up. Okay. That's it. Let's go to a um, wide. This is bothering me here. Let's, let's just do that. Go back to this. Let's go to a wide shot of her walking. Doesn't need to be much. Shift. Dang. That's why my keyboard's stuck. It's holding the shift button down, which is weird. Escape. Skip it. Oh, there we go. I got this keyboard. It's got tape, tape on it, you know. <laughs> She's holding a shield. <clears throat> and in the back are the fjords. That's all you need. Just to get started, that's all you need. What's in the background? More fjords, more mountains, and, and some water. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> the next one, there's, um, let's do a, there's a creature. And it's a wolf. There's the nose. It's a three quarter shot. Here's the wolf. There's the tail. Okay. And it's behind a tree and she's holding a shield and a sword. That's all you need, guys. Here's the wolf. You can't even see it. So your, right? your storyboards are you've got the character developed. So you could show obviously what the character is, is and then the storyboard. Your storyboards are actually a lot more simple. They have to be because you're moving fast. Now, there's three different levels. And that's a really good question, Bill. There's three different levels of storyboards. There's what one I call scratch boards. And those are glorified stick figures. That's all they, they, it tells the story, right? Two is what I call a gray board. And that gray board is somewhere around there. And three, the third one, I don't know if everyone knows, but in the attraction design industry, there's a um, piece of deliverable called key art. And it's really refined. I call them keyboards because now they have color and they have tone. Um, those are the three boards. So somewhere in between here is how we get to all this. And if I did want to drop some tone in here, I could use a nice loose chalk brush and I could put some value in the mountain. I could put a light source on her. I could make him dark and then put the wolf in a shadow. See how much that adds to it? <clears throat> RC, let me ask this question. Do you, because sure. you mentioned this earlier on, and I think it's for tomorrow night, the mood board. Yeah. What is a mood board? Well, you know, I don't want to go too deep into it, but you have your reference board. Is that tomorrow? Uh, yeah, but it's also mood is, is, is um, color is mood, right? Red is angry. Um, green is spooky. Yellow is happy. So colors have a psychological feeling and it's used in movies time and time again. Um, so first you start with value, which is here, and then you move that value into color. 
And the color is a script. So there's artists out there that do nothing but color scripts or color boards. And they're super loose and they just show the theme. I'm, one, I'm a big fan of Brave. And um, obviously it's, uh, you know, has the, the, the Scottish uh, mythology. Um, and they have a beautiful concept book. And, I, you know, I collect concept books and I love it. Um, so to answer your question, uh, a mood board could be reference or it could be color. Um, a color script is something very detailed where um, for Disney, DreamWorks, uh, any of the big uh, companies, they would hire someone to just do a color script so the director would know how to light the set. And colors have psychological uh, feelings uh, that uh, address each of the issues. So cool. There's some boards. Got a couple questions for you. Yeah, yeah. How do, how do you go forward with a new project or story? How do you move it forward? So that, that's um, storytelling, right? Um, great question there. Let me just let me just clear this out. I want to draw this down. Do it. Sorry. I'm actually having fun, guys. I hope you are too. <laughs> All right. I just, I just had to do it. Sorry. All right. We're good. All right. A little cross hatching there. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. So I'm going to close out with this. I'm going to create a new layer. What was the question, Bill? How do you move forward? How do you move a new project forward? Oh, a new project forward. Like, oh, story. You mean how do I move the yeah, story? Yeah. How do you, how do you okay. go forward with a new project or story? Okay. I'm going to show you guys something here that's, um, Gonna, gonna help you with any of the storytellers out there. Um, first of all, it's trial and error, <laughs> but I will tell you this much. I'm gonna draw a simple diagram that's used uh, over and over again in, um, in storytelling. Um, hold on, I'm pulling up a file for you guys. Mm -hmm. One second, guys. I'm going to pull up. Uh, oh, here it is. All right. So what you want to do is you want to create, how do you move it forward? Well, there's two ways of telling stories. You could do a linear. Oops. You do a linear story where the character starts here and he gets into a car, truck, whatever. <coughs> he gets in that truck. He blows a stop sign, truck swerves, crashes, and then um, he's, uh, he's all bandaged up. Oh, my head doesn't feel good. Right? <laughs> I'm doing this cartoony. But, and then he goes home. This was, this was the adventure. So you have your middle story and you have your end, your end, your beginning and your middle. So it's the ordinary world here. Little, um, you have the ordinary world. He gets in his car, not expecting anything. Then uh, he blows a red light and then he goes into his adventure which is the middle. And then there's consequence, which is here. Uh, these are the consequences. Then he goes home and then he gets, um, gets yelled at by his wife <laughs> for, for driving like an idiot. <laughs> so that's a linear story. How do you move it forward? Well, guys, so that kind of, that kind of moves into another question. One yeah. of the other questions was, do you ever take your own photos for reference? Now this car yeah. story, I got to beg to ask, RC. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. Um, your iPhone. Guys, you don't need a lot of money to, to produce awesomeness. You really, really don't. And even traditionally, you don't. I'm doing a whole class on how to, how to do a, a full-blown uh, original painting for like $20 on a skinny budget <clears throat> that I'm working on. But to answer your question and to wrap this up here, the storyboard session, um, 
your phone is amazing. That's all you need is your phone. If you can't do reference on the internet, you could just use your phone and you could literally take sequential shots and break them down and look at them and, and analyze them and <clears throat> get close ups. If you're determined enough, you could have all the resources you need visually to convey it into a story from start to finish. So I hope that answers your question. But yes, photo reference is key <clears throat> because a picture is a thousand words, right? I got, I got one other question I'm going to ask here kind of direct. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, that you, when we were kind of talking off stage or before we got on, on screen, yeah. there, I thought it was very interesting, your progression about how you do things. You showed us already some pencil sketches that you did, then you scan them in. And then yeah. I look behind you on the wall and I see these big, huge uh, oil paintings. And yeah. so what is the process that you go through, just your own personal process? Well, so <clears throat> we're talking about uh, traditional digital hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. So they always start, they always start like, um, they always start as this, as a sketch, you know, um, as that, as that sketch starts to uh, come to life, it, 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 you decide where you want to take it. Right. So let's just say it, it's the leopard. Um, <clears throat> this leopard, I'm going to give you one last little drawing lesson. Um, and I'm going to rough in a, a growling leopard here, snow leopard. He's got his mouth open. So <clears throat> let's just say I did this sketch and I wanted to turn it into a painting. I would develop this just as we are developing our shots together um, and teaching you his ears are back. There's a storytelling here. It's really quick for you guys. And this is his spine, he's coming around. And then and this is his tail. All right, so <clears throat> I would take this, I would refine it. And I would take this and decide what did I want to do? What story did I want to tell? And I would take it to um, either a digital or traditional medium. I'm just going to use shorthand just so we can move it along. And I would take that and decide how, how far I want to develop it. Nine times out of 10, I'll take it into Photoshop and um, hey. And, oh, what's this? <laughs> I, would, I would go on my tablet <laughs> and I would digitize <laughs> the drawing because um, it makes sense, right? All right. Um, I would take that into the computer. Then in Photoshop, I would go ahead and um, you guys, I'm doing this for a reason. These little sketches our diagrammatical sketches is how I really worked my way up through Universal Studios because I was known as the, the go-to guy to quickly uh, diagrammatically sketch out not only inventions, but storyboards and illustrations. Once it's in the computer, um, you would refine it and then you could do one or two things. You could, um, by hand, you could transfer your drawing the old master's way where they would make a grid I'm going to make that same grid here. Let's use a different color. Let's say I wanted to grid this into a painting and I wanted to do it by hand. I didn't want to do it in the computer, right? I'm just doing this really quick, guys. Here's your grids. You line up the grids. You know that, you know, head goes here. There's a shift button again, all right? Um, the body's here, tail's here. You see I'm, I'm using the grid to kind of rough it in and I'm doing it fast and then put some mountains in. You would hand pencil this onto a canvas. Let's just say it's a pretty big canvas. Um, like something behind you on the wall? Yeah, so let's just say it's a three foot by six foot canvas. You will go in here and illustrate it with, with pencil. Once it's penciled, then you'll, you'll paint it with colors. That's a palette. <laughs> and he's holding the palette right here. Like just like Bob Ross. Okay, and he's painting. And that's how you do it. This is the grid system. 
So that's how you go from a digital sketch. I'm gonna use blue because it's my favorite color. That's how you go from a digital sketch here to um, transferring it and getting it just right inside of the computer. Photoshop, like that. <laughs> and then just transferring it with a grid system. Um, I'll, you know, I could, I could do another class on a grid system. It's just pretty basic, but um, that's how you do it. And then once it's done, you could even take a photograph of it with your iPhone and you could bring this original oil painting back into Photoshop and mess with it some more and then make a digital file of the oil painting. Round and round we go. So I'm going to draw an infinity symbol. You know, guys, I just realized that my work is really messy, but I actually do nice finished clean work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the session. Um, we ran a little bit over. We did. I'm going to jump We're back good. to, um, I'll, I'll answer some questions if you want. And um, tomorrow is going to be another session just like this. Um, yeah, same, same bat channel, same time, yeah. everything else. We've got another whole session and it's going to be on color. Is that correct, RC? That is correct. I'm going to go into some of these same illustrations and show you guys not only my process of layering and how I do it, but we're going to have some nice reference of lighting and we're going to go in and we're going to color some storyboards and some characters. Awesome. All right, RC, I'm going to switch screens on here for a second just all right if i can get to it there yep. you go and um just so you guys know uh again rc will be back up again tomorrow night um or same time Let's share that that's right there we go that should hey. do it there we go and so i hope you guys have enjoyed this again tomorrow night will be on color we also if you see in the chat we have our list of speakers if you guys want to take a look at the list of speakers we have scheduled for the next two days they are in there including rc again so i want to thank you guys again have a great evening the rest of your evening have fun and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow oh what do you guys have? It, it even it even comes with um led changing lights in the four corners so it really does make sense. Nah. Yeah, you know, I, you know I, I really love those little lights. I have Photoshop set to blue yeah. and Illustrator green. And when, I, yeah. when I'm switching between apps, it changes those colors. And it's really cool because I just I don't even have to glance. But before my eyes, I see those colors. I know what app I'm in. So, all right. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Have Take have care. Fun. Thank you. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao for now.